Welcome to the Very Secret Plan. Your familiar host, Captain Sweep. <laughs> Burning in the hellfires of doom, I see. <laughs> Are you getting the humor of this yet? <laughs> <laughs> my God. How you doing, my man? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, man. Just doing my thing. Busy days, busy days. I have time to eat, which is nice. Today, at least a lunch. <laughs> it's insane. Everything is insane. <laughs> but you know, I asked for it, so here I am. There you go. <laughs> I did it. Ah, just cool to see the constellation emerging after so long. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, there was a moment when I was in that meeting. <laughs> I'm just, you know, watching the screen, just watching the people talk. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. It's we're all gonna be these Zoom calls for the rest of this pretty much. Well, we better organize the Zoom calls well. It's a thing, like, that's the thing about the time crimes later, right? Like, about, you know, we better start looking at cycles. You've been saying it, I've been thinking about it. I'm like, hmm, what does our full moon look like then? What does our new moon look like? Like, what does our relationship with those cycles start to look like in terms of planning? Are we considering those things? Like, you know, uh, it'd be interesting to see how the time translator actually gets used. I'm curious. I mean, you must see now, like, we need... We need these tools. Yeah, we do. <laughs> if, if we don't have them, we're going to do the same things we've done. And guess what? It didn't work out too good, did it? No, we didn't. <laughs> like if we go down that path and we keep going on and the cycles are going on, whether we know it or not, and if we don't have a way to track it and then yeah. actually use it, we're going to be like back here. Like drag behind it. Definitely not. Uh -huh. Was rock. Like, Great. You want to facilitate the meeting? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I'm down to take a back seat. Go for it, man. Fucking take the captain's chair. <laughs> exactly. You want to you switch roles? Hey, you, you're going to like what I've been doing. Watch. 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 I'm stoked, man. I'm stoked for your leading of the meeting tomorrow. It's, it's, you know, it's it's again that fly that's on the wall and everyone's like, what the fuck is that fly doing there? <laughs> well, the fly is actually pretty important, but just don't mind the fly. <laughs> One day that fly is going to come in and go, hey guys, I've been watching the whole time. I'm from yeah. XR7. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> Nine billion trillion beings are watching you guys and I'm the eyeballs for that. Like, Civilization. <laughs> uh, what's up? Well, um, did you uh, did you fill the, the the map, or you just didn't do it? And just nope. You, <laughs> you just said Elijah's <laughs> done it, and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I did create my my um, the, the primary that non you know old paradigm, new paradigm. I got the chief binary, man. That's good enough. Oh, I know what you're going to do. I know you're just going to. Elijah? Nah. <laughs> hey, you asked for it, man. <laughs> hey, I've been waiting. <laughs> you know I've been waiting. I'm throwing you on the stage, bro. <laughs> you yep. haven't noticed. <laughs> and and now, you're, now you get to have the fun. <laughs> exactly. Now it's like. Okay, you guys got to deal with this guy. I've been dealing with this guy for all this time, and guess what? Now you have to deal with him, and he hasn't even started yet. You think you got it, but nah. <laughs> exactly. 
it's gonna be like you know uh, yes the enchantment with the being the person like i don't want to be the person anymore good i'm gonna be a person it's great <laughs> i like being a person <laughs> i think when that guy came to zamir and he gave the feedback and he said you bring people to the stage you are not the stage <laughs> yeah realize the difference mm -hmm. Everyone yeah. needs the stage at a certain time. We're exactly. setting the stage. We're but setting if, the stage. But if you I don't like understand, one of my gifts is setting a stage. Yeah, and it's it's beautiful. You you did, like when you know you did the job, then you can relax. Totally. You don't have to do it. Like everything is about right place, right? And when you totally. find yeah. it, you don't have to compete. Mm -hmm. But everyone's competing because they're not in the right place. Exactly. So they won't allow anyone to do anything until exactly. they're in that right place. <laughs> oh, I know. And so much of a process of life is just discovering what that place is, to be honest. You know, especially in my 20s. I mean, it's the time where I have to figure out what that place is. You know, I'm only trying to, try to tell you what your place is. You're like, eh. <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 think push, I push people. Then they I don't want to go there. Oh, but what's over here? <laughs> What do you think about that chief binary? I mean, you know, about the old paradigm being separation and the new paradigm being unification. Well, I mean, it ties in with Carl Calvin's work, right? I mean, the Mayans are basically saying the ninth wave is unity and everything else pretty much is duality. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't quite get that. I was counting on the eighth wave being the moral wave, the values wave. But when I interviewed Carl, he said, nah. <laughs> said, no, that's that's the digital age. And I said, what the fuck? I thought that I thought that eighth wave was the values wave, and I was like riding that, and he, and and then it was well, of course, like the top wave unifies them all. Exactly. But all the other waves are fighting each other, like in their quantum waves. So everyone's kind of stratified, and everything's fighting, but mm -hmm. only the people who go into the ninth wave at nine get out of time and go, hey man, this is where the party is. But if you're in those waves, it's fucking chaos. Because all the waves are fighting. <laughs> and that's where the path, the seven, is like, what are all the paths to unification? Well, I mean, they're pretty infinite, but like, you know, those pretty, pretty general paths about like the six darshans or like the seven, you know, levels. Um, uh, oh. I don't know though, you had path of suffering, path of awakening, and then path of healing. I would put path of suffering, path of healing, then path, like I would put awakening like almost last. Like awakening is the final culmination, isn't it? No, I mean, think about it. You're, you're suffering, you're in yeah. hell, right? Me, me and my work, I'm in hell. <laughs> me trying to do anything, in hell. And then I awaken to the fact that no one fucking can hear me. <laughs> oh great, I'm awakening. Fran fucking tastic, but guess what? I've got all my trauma inside. I've got all my unhealed wounds. I've got everything in me. I might awaken, but I still haven't dealt with my inner shit, like I yawning see. as I speak. My awakening. Right? It's not like the awakening. It's like an awakening to your suffering. Well, you, it's the step out. Like to awaken means I can leave, you're finally to the point where you believe you can leave that behind because you had a high state experience, mm. like the DMT or the something took you somewhere that went fuck man i don't want to fucking suffer anymore mm -hmm. so then you're awakening but then you got to heal and then when you're healing you realize well no i got to transform it's not just healing and then you go into the archetype and the, you're a wizard or a king or you're whatever are these ego identifications and then you hold on to that but at some point you got to surrender that to be of service to god mm -hmm. so i hear that Mm -hmm. And the big guys just freaking laugh. <laughs> I created you guys. What are you doing? <laughs> You're fighting. Oh, that's a good plan. Mm -hmm. so, so, contributors, uh, I think the contributors, the first, like, I, I, I kind of like, you know, uh, some of the binaries that you broke out. I would think for contributors, it would be like, um, like those who, uh, I think John, almost could show me pull that map up. Yeah. Can you pull that map up? Just... 
You gotta get some of these. They're really nice, man. They're uh, these little whiteboards, mini whiteboards, handheld whiteboards. Oh, and what? And they can be. You can erase they go them. On the screen. Pardon me. And then they go on the screen too. No, I mean you. I mean you can't. I mean, I, I just I just like having a stack of mini whiteboards because you use a lot of paper, right? I I like sometimes it's nice to be able to know what things are paper that you want to keep and what things are a whiteboard. They're just ideation that you want to wipe off. <laughs> oh, right. You know. So it's like not everything gets stored in like infinite realms of paper that you want to fucking map out. Okay, let me just get this thing here. You see it now? Not yet. You see it now? Yeah, now I can see it. So yeah, I don't like inner inner members, outer allies. You know. Okay. Uh, even though I get what you're saying with that, right? Well, um, I mean, there's going to be some organization that has whatever the parameters are that is going to be deciding what is going in the manifesto or not, right? Okay. It has, has to be. So the boundary is going to be people inside that out of that are going to be the allies. So if you can come up with a better language, tell me. But mm. How do you like the air and the fire thing? No opinion on it. It's going to be a freaking bone. User just go burn in the hellfire, you know. <laughs> go dance in the air and play. Uh, I think the internet and computer access and and not computer access. Yeah, so that's, I, a really, that's a really cool binary, actually. I really like that. That's super useful. Um, because if we want to be unanimous, then we have to consider the fact that there are billions of people that don't have access. And, what does that look like in terms of them, in terms of getting their participation, you know, and how, like, and you're right about, you know, what, about what Lucian said about the massless hierarchies. If you're like, you can't eat, you don't care about a manifesto. <laughs> you know? You're suffering. <laughs> you know, you're suffering. You. you know, um, and so I feel like if the 10 richest people in the world have access to more wealth than half the world, then the people we really need to transform are the people who are holding the power to make sure that those 3.6 million eat, have water, have food. Like it's really the people right now who are already higher on the hierarchy. And that's the whole thing about flipping the Maslow's hierarchy on its head. It's that now the people who have climbed up the pyramid need to be the people who hold the responsibility of making sure that all are moved up the pyramid. Yeah. That's your only, your only, you know, your only, um, what's the right word? It's like, it's like the dharmic responsibility of wealth. Well, and I guess that's the, and then the distinction between the people who want to do that versus the people who don't want to do that. Exactly. Right? And that's a big distinction. Because and there's also people who want to do it, but don't know how to do it. And that's something that I was addressing on this call, which I felt like is a big piece. When you have a lot of money, you know, you are also very, you become very distrustful of a lot of things. The distrust builds up. Right. I mean, look at Bill Gates. He's put billions of dollars towards his cause of wanting to do vaccines. But look, the whole world is still going to judge him and call him fucking asshole. Right. Fair enough. And I'm sure you have a lot of people like that who may have an incredible amount of wealth who don't know how to put it or don't know where to put it. or don't have trust that if they're going to put it here, here this is going to happen. And so, you know, uh, part of those issues are systemic. And this is where I feel like a hundred billion dollar fund needs to exist to build the next generation systems on our planet. Now, maybe that's pie in the sky. Maybe that's idealistic. I don't know. But I feel like if that amount of money is going towards, you know, the random bullshit that it's going towards the world. And so what Bill Gates and those guys did was create the giving pledge saying, if you're wealthy, you contribute half of your wealth to, you know, upon your deathbed towards X. So there's one company that I saw that my fund, my friend funded, which was, about automating your wills, okay? So 
the people that are going out in the next generation and who are like, fuck, I'm going to leave a burned world behind and I'm going to die like soon. And they have wealth. If you can hit them and be like, leave your wealth here because we're going to steward the next movement. Imagine if we did a pledge and we got a hundred thousand feet people who are on their way out to say, I buy into the new earth manifesto. I'm going to leave my wealth to you guys to steward the next generation systems. Cause I trust what you are doing. Now you're starting to get interesting, right? Something nobody thinks of really is inheritance is probably the biggest way to be able to capture wealth towards the next generation system. So I mean the infrastructure for a trust foundation that has a, a very you know, transparent and good, <laughs> using it for good, right? Yeah. So, you know, I know we're going all over the place right now, but I, I did write up a, a document for what this fund can look like. It's called the Dharmic Fund Manifesto. This is what I spend all my time doing. People are like, I write, like you fucking make maps. I write you documents write. for everything. I've got a unanimous one. I've got an anthem one. I've got a this. I've got like a Nexus 20 page white paper that I sent you. I have a fucking fund manifesto. Like I, I just, that's what I do. Well, it's, it seems it might be a good idea to put the maps that there were any. Go figure. <laughs> and that's where our, you know, we're going to learn how to play our roles together really well. Um, can you give me an option to share my screen? How do you do that? Make me a host. How do you do that? Go to participants and then right click on where it says more, click down and make me a host. So this is what Ian McKenzie said. We need the Olympics of regenerative culture. We need the Olympics of regenerative culture. The nice. world's best innovators collaborate, not compete, to design, deploy the best solutions to our most pressing problems. Elders lead millions in grief rituals for what has been done to the biosphere and each other. Wealth from the top 1% is voluntarily given to a cooperative global council led by indigenous grandmothers who conduct online conversation with the masses and Mother Gaia to collectively fund the shift. The goal is a livable, the gold is a livable future for all. So Ian McKenzie wrote that. Really, I felt that was a really nice. potent paragraph, right? General systems theory is based on the assumption that there are universal principles of organization which hold for all systems, be they physical, chemical, biological, mental, or social. The mechanistic worldview seeks to universally, seeks universality by reducing everything to its material constitutes. The systemic worldview, on the con contrary, seeks universality by ignoring the concrete material out of which the systems are made so that their abstract organization comes into focus. Right? I also thought that was really, really good and very much speaking to the work you've done your whole life. Um, so the vision of the Dharmic Fund is to support the rise of the new societal OS. It will give rise to a new corporate model called the Nexus, which evolves both the corporation and the cooperative into a heterarchical framework that takes into account our relationship with the earth and our responsibility for a healthy, healthy and thriving society. The Dharmic Fund follows the manifesto for new earth, which outlines the lever points required to shift us to a new timeline. The highest outcome is to serve the unanimous movement. Fuck, man, I wrote this a year ago. Like, <laughs> I'm like looking at this with the conversation today. Anyways. We must move beyond impact just in terms of better products that do less harm, that are sustainable. And we must, at this radical point in history, fund the new systems that will replace the old. We must look beyond our narrow self-interest in traditional structures like for-profit, non-profit, corporations, and cooperatives, and invest into new systemic architecture that is built to serve the good of the whole. Right? Yada, yada, yada. Anyways, I won't go into all this. I'll send this to you. You can read it. Uh, but we must look at these five levels of impact simultaneously. Consciousness impact, values framework impact, societal impact, business impact, and environmental impact. Um, we must first start at the building blocks of our reality, which is our relationship to time, our relationship to energy as money, and the mutual trust networks that form the fabric of society, from credit to money to connections. Right? We then must move into our values, which are programmed by our collective systems of agreement and our beliefs about the nature of reality. We must learn to reprogram the fundamental architecture of our agreement frameworks, mainly the corporate mythos, to reflect these emergent values. And simultaneously, we need organizational tools that will allow for multi-stakeholder collaboration so the energy and momentum built from this rapid unification can be harnessed and activated. These tools come in the matter of new systems architectures, agreement frameworks, shared workspaces, and online collaboration tools. 
And so I kind of detail out what needs to happen, reprogramming time, tokenized public equity structures, uh, new collective incorporation structures, new digital commons, a new operating system for intellectual property, you know, a new OS for digital democracy, powering global meditations, crowd agreements and actions, cooperative values-based wholesale manufacturer connection frameworks, i.e. Alibaba and Amazon replacements, mutual credit networks, replacing centralized credit and debt money with mutual trust in communities, uh, water, home sharing, breaking the lords of the land, crowd, crowd purchase real estate, tribe builder retribalizing within cities, uh, uh, anthems, the next generation of music, planetary guardians, the game that changes the world, awaken the global ritual, repatterning health, the biocomputer store, you know, experiential education, the art renaissance, it goes on and on and on. Right, uh, but these are the things that I've identified as pillars. That once these things are all funded and pretty much on the harmony wheels, nine and eight, we find the best people and we fund all of them to work. And that who cares if it's fucking hundred billion dollars? If fucking the Fed's printing three trillion right now from their thumb, like it means nothing. Like well, let's harness it. Let's just harness it right now. <laughs> you know. Um, okay. So what's what's the I mean, it sounds like you got the buy-in from these people. Kind of, not for this part. Um, and so for me, it's like, uh, it's like all there, but I, I, I'd love to map it. I'd love to work with you to map this stuff, right? So I've got like, okay, we've got Unanimous. Okay, we've got Manifesto. Okay, we've got Anthem. Okay, we've got the Dharmic Fund. You know, we've got like, you know, these these things that all need to happen, but in my mind, they're not like organized properly. And that's where I need your help at looking and creating like the map of how these things work. Well, if can we switch back to your thing, yeah. We're done. I mean, what I see as a next step, at least for me or for the whole thing is we need to, to create a community communication room where we mm -hmm. take all the tables and the maps and create like basically a command room, right? Where we can start to place, if we have one in each community, then we can go in every community on the planet and then that's what connects them all together. This is what I think. Can we do it digitally now? Because we have digital whiteboards. Of course. Even if we have physical spaces, we can still have screens project the maps. You know, you know, hollow move things around. Like, of you know? course. I mean, the, the the thing is, it's just we need one. Yeah. Right. The template. And once we've got the one, mm -hmm. like, and I saw it, like one is fixed and one is movable. So one is movable. You can take the, the festivals and move around, and one is fixed in each community. So yeah. That to me was, that's my aim point in terms of taking the tools and creating a container so they all work together. Yeah. Agreed. Because, I mean, I think what you're seeing is, I mean, when you truly get into a holistic frame of mind, mm -hmm. you have it, but then you want to, you've got all the pieces and the pieces are coming in and you're going, okay, well, where do they fit? Yeah. But then you you still need to buy it from everybody else, exactly to agree to whatever that is. And, and mm -hmm. so, you know, now it seems with this new Earth manifesto, like like it's it's like when I was seeing what Maya put on and she was showing that model. And like there's there's hundreds of models out there, right? There's no end to the amount of models. And when I see a model, all I see are particular concepts placed in a certain order, and then I I compare it with my own. Mm -hmm. and go, okay, well, interesting that that is the configuration because you can mm -hmm. basically replace any configuration of concepts to create a model. Mm -hmm. like, this is no end to the amount of, con uh, of models you can create, but when you take, again, six or five or four, as you know, that number creates the connection between the parts, and that has a significance that is sort of underestimated by people, I think. Definitely, it's been underestimated by me a lot. I've underestimated a lot of these things a lot, right? Um, but, you know, I'm still learning. So in the inflow, right, like at one or two or three or four or five, the vertical integration comes because the number determines the model. So at five, creativity, you're always using five. So you're always able to layer the parts. At six, it's, it's, it's at, I mean, a relationship at six, it's the relationships, but if you take a, take a tetrahedron, there's six relationships between those parts. So like there's a physical reason why six is relationships. Mm -hmm. So then again, all the relationship models, they layer on one another. So this is, and when you color code it and put it on a time cycle, 
you know, this is a little bit more advanced than most people are used to in terms of models. Mm -hmm. So what you've done is you, you go out in the world and you see, wow, that's, that's there. And, and now you're, you can understand what I've been doing because I, I was sharing tidbits along the way with you, but I'm fucking doing something, right? I did something, I created something mm -hmm. that you either get or you don't, you're either using or you don't, but it hasn't been built. Mm -hmm. And so you, you can take pieces and go build something. We need to build it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like we need, you know, part of this whole thing is funding that built. Like that needs to get funded. That needs to get built. But so your, you know, work is to, is to, we need to pair you with some of the best UI designers that are out there and product designers that are out there because you need like a set, like, man, uh, I'll show you kind of a couple of things here. I think it's important for you to see. Um, and I, I think I understand one of our biggest disconnection points. Yeah. And I, and I think it's, it's, it's your, your understanding what a nexus is or my yeah. understanding. And I'll tell you what mine is. And we'll see if it fits with yours because I, I get, I get what you, I mean, in one sense, it could be, you want to create your own organizational structure that becomes the, the self of the new paradigm. Fine. Mm -hmm. And then we're at war with one another. It doesn't quite work. If you, if you have a shared knowledge community in every mm -hmm. community, and if you look at arts as being one of those pieces, mm -hmm. now look at all the shared knowledge communities across Canada, every community having one. And then you look at all of the arts in BC, because I, I was looking at it at a bioregional connection point. Mm -hmm. So if BC, if you took all the arts from every community, that's the nexus, the arts nexus of all those pieces. So you're, you're now doing a matrix, right? You've got all the shared knowledge communities. You've got a piece of it. But when you go across BC and you put all the artists together, now you have a nexus, your artist nexus, of all the artists in BC. And at some point, that's a kind of like a guild and all the artists around the world are organized together. So I'm coming kind of vertically, you're coming horizontally. Mm -hmm. And you're, you know, so when I got it, I got, okay, that's got what it. he's doing. Got it. So maybe I changed the language of what I'm saying so that it doesn't conflict with the language. It well, no, no, it's still, you, I mean, when I said the knowledge nexus, mm -hmm. to me it was, it was that. But what you were doing is you were giving the defined detail that I hadn't sort of either seen or, you know, worked out or whatever it was. And you're pointing to this thing because everyone's coming up with pieces of the puzzle. I didn't come up with the whole thing, but I've come up with pretty much the framework. And so the nexus is like an artist nexus, and there'd be like a, a tech nexus, and there would be a philanthropy nexus, and a mm -hmm. political nexus, right? Mm -hmm. Like Can Canadian First, I saw it is like the marketing nexus. Like all the marketing organizations of the, of the shared knowledge communities form together one big marketing company for all of Canada. And that's what was called Canadian. So I, I, saw, I saw it similarly. I just didn't see it as bioregionally as you did. That's all. I think that was the only difference. So I'll send you this as well um, about what I called the artist nexus, where I called it unlabel. <laughs> unlabel music, right? The artist nexus, right? <laughs> like we've had enough labels. We've had enough labeling people, <laughs> you know, music labels. As soon as you call it, it becomes a label. <laughs> yeah. So this is what my idea was for it, which was very similar to what you were saying, is that most musicians need the same things. Recording studios, mixing, mastering, engineers, design work, photography, videography, PR, web design, merchandising, management booking, administrative support, social media. These are all jobs related to arts. And all of those jobs are segmented out completely. Everybody's working completely independently for every different artist independently. There's no organization. And then so artists have to go to these exploitative labels to take, that just organize those services under companies. Instead, if you had a nexus, you'd have, like you were saying, everybody in their ideal job, all of them supporting each other. The future of distribution is not through a record label anymore. It's when artists share their social media. I have 20,000, you have 100,000, you have 20, you have 15, you have none of Now we have 144 people. Now collectively we're reaching 300 million people. What do you need a label anymore? 
You now use syndicated distribution amongst artists. You're able to use a new Patreon model, so people become patron of the Nexus. Now that you have 144 people together, you're like, I'm gonna pull my music off Spotify and I'm gonna create my own service, you know, where you, you know, pay for our music, we're gonna do this and we're gonna offer and we're gonna leverage and lift each other up. And you know, th there's five categories I put in this artist Nexus, which were star like, uh, like neophyte star, rising star, you know, different depending on the amount of reach you had and albums that you had. And so those were different levels so that yeah. the, the stars and the people who had massive influence and input would have different levels of decision making. Um, so I, you know, have this document as well. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to read all my documents, but. <laughs> well, no, but I, I get the idea. I mean, my thing was more, okay, we've got to integrate the maps. Unless you're integrating the maps. I'm not interested. Yeah, I've just been working diligently at creating, you know, whenever I see what, you know, a piece of it, I've been doing a 10 page document of how that would actually look like, let's flush it out. Right. Yeah. Um, so I have the artist nexus. I haven't really done any of the other ones. I released, well, you, you don't need, you know, all the other ones could be, uh, the structure is going to be the same, but it's going to be a different focal point. Yeah. I, I, figured mean, if one, I figured if we do one well, the rest of them will become more self-evident anyways. Well, yeah, as soon as you do one, then you can just change the languaging and, you know, I mean, essentially, between the two of us, we're reorganizing the entire planet, right? Pretty much. <laughs> Whether people know it or not. If you're watching, you know, you, you might think we're a bit arrogant, but believe me, we are. <laughs> Remind is the, about the only person who ever understood what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were paired together for a reason. I remember being 20 and being like, <laughs> I remember, oh. I remember the first time meeting you at the olive tree when Zamir came <laughs> and took me and you laid out all your cards and maps. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I'll never forget that day. You were, I don't have, you know, you were 20? I was 20. I remember that that video, the shifting lenses that it made with Camille. Oh God, yeah. And I, put, and I put you in there, and Camille took you out later on. But it was it was just you doing your a download of vision con, uh, convo about bringing people together. You know, like I mean, I wish we still had those videos, man. I can't believe those tapes got lost. It's it's yeah, yeah. That that one's still there. It's it's on in, in Vimeo. No, I'm not in that one. No, the one in Vimeo, you're in it. Shifting lenses in Vimeo, you're. Mm. I, I put you in. Mm. And to me, that was me. High, like I wanted to highlight you, right? I mean, I was. It's funny now with the way media is. We live with these ideas, right? And then they just appear. Okay, oh. so so what about? What do we got to do here? Because, it, you know, I think it's important for me and you so, to, to have this time alone. Mm -hmm. because, I agree. Because we got to figure some shit out <laughs> that then helps everyone else. Yeah. It, but exactly. if, if we're not set and straight, it's going to yeah. get very confusing for everybody else. Well, I think we need to set the primary org structure of this information flow, right? And I think that four quadrants are the place to start, right? They really are. They're the foundation of the inflow and they're the foundation of where I think the manifesto can be, right? The four levels. So well, I think it, we... Yep, keep going. Well, I think if we set like, you know, that inner individual, you know, we need to... So there's one task to unify the, unify the spiritual traditions. And it's not like this is new work. A lot of people have been attempting to do this. And so we just put the right people in the right place. Ben Boulder, we put Zamir, we put, you know, who are the people that their life's dharma has been researching the spiritual traditions and synthesizing. Let's get them passages from each one of the great texts about the fundamental interconnection in the worldview of yoga. And let's synthesize it down really, really, really clearly. Right. Um, and out of that comes those like four agreements. We are the earth. We are the water. We are the da da da. Like, you know, the ones that are the principles of unanimous, the major declaration. And so the center point is like the declaration of sovereignty, the declaration of our own divinity, the clear declarations that come from saying, yes, this is something I know to be, I know to be true that I am a divine being in connection with source. I know to be true that, you know, 
Um, we are all one interconnected. They're, I know to be true that boom. And these are things. And then what people want to like debate over whether they're religion. It's like, no, here's what Jesus said. Here's what this said. Here's what like every major constellation have said, Muhammad have said. And so the, when people go into there, it immediately moves away from that division or that those ideas of separation or, or sectarianism, because it, it's now a constellation. It's not just a person saying it. So I think that's like the, the work for the inner individual sphere and for a team of people who are in the individual sphere to do that. Then there's the outer individual, which is like, okay, assuming those things are true, we know those things to be true, we need a values map and we need a team to now universalize the principles of where that, how they translate into our, how we show up in the world or like, you know, like, and so that's where I think I kind of need a bit of your, your guidance here on how that would actually be structured, organized, you know, what, you know, you've done so many values, maps and processes. This is like the Maha one now. So, well, I think the, the one I showed you, right. The one I did last night with the seven paths coming in and like that paradigm time cone. Yeah. That's the start point. Right. Because we, we have to get people making the, seeing the distinction between the paradigms. Yeah, that's, that always has to be the beginning and the start point of the entry into the portal, whatever it is, whether it's the blue pill, the red pill, or which portal you want to go into. You know, you want to go into the past, you want to go into the future. Mm -hmm. So within the software and within the um, that conceptual map, you know, is the start point. Mm -hmm. And then again. You know, then you got this time cone and then you've got the layers and then you've got the values maps. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and then just placing people in their, in the right spots. Right? So essentially I think the, the path of suffering, go. <laughs> <laughs> That's your spot. You go. <laughs> well, yeah, it's going to be a, <laughs> so, what about tomorrow? Um, that was how about... I wasn't finished. Okay. Because what I was saying is, okay, you have that one layer. Now you have the layer of the outer individual, which is how do you create a global values map, bro? I remember this was the first thing after I got inspired by you. And I created the first massive fucking piece. I think I still have it in my storage, actually. It's my first major map that I ever created. That was like the size of my table, which is called the global values map. I was like, me looking at how you created a global value system. I was like, I don't know, I had a channel looking at how, how values arose and you know the different interpretations of values and the spectrums and the spectrums of values. Like, you know, I was looking at spectrums, both horizontal and vertical for our relationship to values and what they mean to us. And I was like, oh, what happens if you put a line in the middle of a value saying the interpretation of love or the interpretation of compassion, depending on your level of consciousness. So like looking at level of consciousness in those seven paths and looking at how you would interpret a value from those and then being like, okay, knowing that, how would you create a synthesis of a principle that applied to that kind of, how would you universalize those? Um, and so that's a task for how those inner become those, that value map that the world can then give their feedback. Cause that outer individual map is what I would say when you had a caravan and you want to get a hundred million people, like Brock was saying to leave what they think that means to them, it would probably be around that level. I mean, I, I guess your investors would be pretty okay with the fact of uh, tapping into the New Earth Manifesto to bring in hundreds of millions of people into Caravan. I it, mean, makes, it, it makes sense to launch Caravan with the New Earth Manifestos in it as the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then all the other things can come, but to definitely use all the pieces we have, always referring back to this New, New Earth Manifesto. Totally, man. And, you know, I'm open now. Like, you know, I'm not, I don't know. I just, things have changed for me where I just, I care less about so many things. And like, I feel like we need to bring the inflow matrix as well into caravan, you know, in some way, like I feel like we need to sync our technologies together. You know that I mapped it out. Eh? Like I've got it all. <laughs> no, you haven't. No, no, you just don't know. You don't know how much work I do behind the scenes. You may not be listening, but I'm, I'm, I've done it. Work is done. Oh. Okay. Well, I'd love to see, I'd love to see some of those maps if you, you know, at some point, so we can explore that. Um, but I definitely think that Inflow Matrix, obviously I feel like it's the, you know, it, it's the OS. Caravan's a piece. 
right? It's a, yeah. it's a technology, it's a video tool. That's a piece within it. I don't have any hubris about it. Okay. It doesn't need to be the thing. It's just, I, mean, I want it to be the piece that it does its job well. Yeah. You know? um, and let, let it be that. Um, so whatever that is and however it's useful, whether it's for that forum technology where we aggregate opinions and put gems and harvest and use it as a knowledge harvesting tool, great. Use it as a reality TV show tool, great. If we use it as a convo types tool where people can use the convo types and aggregate it, great. You know, we'll, we'll figure out how it's used best in the reference point of this. Um, and so then, okay, great. So you have those agreements and then that inner group work, which is like every map that Maya showed me, which is like all like, how do we actually look at how we transform our, our communities and our businesses and our organizations and our models according to these values? Now, the interesting part, the part I've been looking at is how do you have the inner group without the outer group defined, right? Like the interplay between all of them is so clear that they all need to like play together, right? And well, so I don't know, like when I was looking at the synergy wheel, I was like, oh, I don't know how this works actually with with this type of function. What do you, what do you mean? Well, can you just pull up the synergy wheel? Can you just share your screen on the synergy wheel for a second? Well, I will. I've been reorganizing my computer. So I just see. I guess the useful the usefulness of a tool comes when you can't do something without it. You know what I mean? What's up? Well, like a tool is useful, like is indispensable if you can't do something without it. Yeah, exactly. I'm telling you, man, the best use I've seen for Caravan are fucking reducing meeting times down because you don't need meetings where everybody's in it. You can also just have a tool where people can leave one minute feedback with a specific conversation type and a specific output and everybody aggregates it and you auto stitch that into episodes and people are leaving feedback onto what best opinions they want. And you don't have to sit there in our meeting. You can flip through opinions, star which ones they want, they rise to the top, they go somewhere and boom, you have coherence. So that's really the best use case I've seen for Caravan. And I actually created a seven page app description for what that would look like to augment Caravan into a business tool. You know, it was a big thing for me today to just to release the seven, the convo types. Yeah, that was huge, man. You know, it's just a, it was a moment of realization of just letting go of, of all ownership.
So I have to become the host again or something? Oh, uh, yeah, I can. Can you make me host? Yeah. See it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know that the big the big switch point for people is in not just having a conceptual model, but having a conceptual model with different time cycles, right? Mm -hmm. That's like the breakthrough of the inflow matrix. That's something which is a big jump for people to get. Mm -hmm. So what did you want it up for? I want it up because, you know, um, I understand the, the like inner individual connection in the manifesto, the Dharma, the values map that surrounds it, like how the manifesto is then moving into how we reorient our outer society, which is like economics, governance, infrastructure, all of that. But then the inner group part of it, where I felt there was more like, how do we reorganize our relationships and our communities, you know, um, and how do we reorganize our um, work and work culture and our business and business culture. And a lot of the stuff around the inner group still felt kind of unclear to me of how that would play in as a ring in the manifesto. Well, just what's coming in is the, the six, the six fields, right? Like the business, the service, the social, the family, the friendship, and the intimate. Well, that's good. Yeah, fair that, enough. That those are the big six. Yeah. So at the inner group, if you use that as the first entry point, that's really good. I like it. Um, that distinguishes, and then this synergy wheel is is within the business wheel, within the business one. Yeah, this is a synergy. Nice one, Elijah. Fuck. Okay, you got it. Okay, awesome. So friends, family, volunteer, business, intimate. Yeah, social, friendship, family. Okay, so we need we need, we need more synergy wheels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I think what we're doing here is we're we're figuring out the order of the like we're creating, you know, the time cone is is the container. Yeah. Right? And so we're figuring out the order that people come into it within, it's probably gonna be a virtual reality, right? Yeah, probably. I mean, it's, it makes sense yeah. that this is gonna be a virtual reality. So we're, we're creating a, a portal for people to re-educate themselves into the new paradigm through the New Earth Manifesto, and that's the edge over, let's say, the Earth Charter. I mean, because there's all these other groups and organizations and agreements that are doing, want to do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. But this is going to get buy-in because we're going to use the tech of the day to make something, you know, fantastic. And they don't have the inflow matrix as the operating system. Yeah. Because the idea being that, you know, the craziness is the inflow matrix can create any business. So it's going to redefine sort of business on the planet. Mm -hmm. They don't know that yet. Okay, that's helpful. That makes more sense to me now. That, that what I see as a synergy wheel is a business synergy wheel. I get yeah. that. Yeah. I know how. Because in the family, it's going to be different. And so all there's going to be other breakdowns, right? Because there's always like in the thing that new map did. It's like the new map. I think we should we should bring Chris on board. I think we should use new map, but then new map is missing the inflow matrix architecture. So maybe basically, maybe we use his infrastructure and. And well, build a lot of info matrix off that. No, definitely. I mean, he he was he's one of the few software systems that I actually dived into and said, okay, this is one of them, right? And he's yes. he's one guy who created it, Chris Lacombe. So he's we got to find him, and he's on the team, and 
we got to fully fund whatever he's doing because he's he's another originator, right? And I don't know. Uh, design specs, bro. That's the one thing. We have your maps. We don't have design specs. So, you know, uh, my here. This is what I was going to show you before. Um, you make me a host. And as you're going to be designing the software, we're going to be designing the software. Um, this is something that inevitably has to happen. And most of this has to happen from you. I mean, I do my part, which is creating my master documents, but you know, the inflow is residing with you. So the design specs have to come from you. There's no way around that. Um, where is well, it? And, and, and I need a team, right? I need, I actually, I need a new laptop. I still have my old laptop. Given, give, but even with resources in a team, you're going to need to do this. That's what I'm yes. saying. Like, yes. Like I had to do this for my stuff. Like, look, okay. So fundamental user story questions. So this is when I was doing um, uh, around the experience economy part. I don't know if you remember that when I was like, let's build the future experience economy. Yeah. So as a user, how do I discover experiences around my interests? As a user, how do I earn tokens and points that I can use to buy other experiences? As a business, how do I offer my space up for experiences? As a X, how can I sign up local business to be on Caravan? How can I, as an experience creator, offer my experience to different places? How do I charge for experiences to the app? As a user, in what incentive do I have to add clips to the experience caravans? As a user, how does the app learn about what experiences I'm seeking and deliver those to me? That's our AI. As a user, how do I easily network with new friends I meet, right? So that is our invitation function. As a user, how does my profile reflect who I am, what experiences I've been on, what media I've created? As a user, how does my profile and caravan show a different facet of me than anywhere else? Right? As a local business is, how can I add rewards? And you go on as a brand, as a space, as a, so who are the stakeholders and what are the stakeholders trying to do? And then when a UI person and when your developers come in, they know your user stories that you're like, as a business, how do I X? How do I X? Do you know what I would suggest just on this? I mean, yeah. each one of these questions needs to be on a card. Yeah. Like bottom line, we got to switch. This is brilliant stuff. Great work. Um, but definitely it needs to be moved from the document into cards mm -hmm. because then, then we can play with it in much different ways. But, mm -hmm. but, the, but you're identifying the essentials, which, which That's is, it. of course, which you're very good at. As an experience creator, I need to do X. As a physical business, this needs to do X. As an end yeah. user, this needs to do X. As an X, this needs to do X. And if it doesn't do these things, then it doesn't fucking, this is not what I want to build. Yeah. And so I'm going to share this document with you. Um, and maybe you can use this as a, as a kind of a, a template for how you would build that same thing for looking at who are the stakeholders in the inflow? What exactly do the functions that they have? To <laughs> Wait a second, like the entire human race, you know, like who's the user? Everybody. Uh, well, you're gonna a little have, general like, here. You're going to have to narrow it down by module, my friend. Okay. That's no, one, you you have, understand the amount of work we have? Like, <laughs> bro, rest of our lives. Okay. I get it. But you know, what else are we going to do? Hey, I got no problem with it. I'm just like, like, you know, I've been doing this alone. So uh, I need a bit of a hand, you know? Yeah, man. Well, ideally, you know, the funnel that we're going to pull when we do this right is going to raise us more money than we know what to do with. So like, well, I'd just be happy with a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll put that high up on our docket. It's just <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's like ridiculous. It's like I'm an author and I'm, I've, I've written 20 books and I need a pen. And everyone around me has got a pen. I'm just, just give me a freaking pen. <laughs> Throw me a bone. You have, are you using a desktop right now? Yeah. Okay. So we got to put that in the budget. Okay. Sweet. Like, like I need that immediately, you know? I actually like the guy in New Zealand who needs one. Great, I like. I was talking to this this Gino guy, and he's a, he says he's got a network of entrepreneurs, and he's got a network of people who help entrepreneurs, and he wants to create these spiritual emergency um, centers all across the planet. So he's got these big plans, right? And I've been introduced to him to this game designer, and then I find out the game designer's like me. You know, he's he's operating on fumes. He doesn't even have a laptop, and he's got I. With my the best game I've ever heard, the mm -hmm. best and nine portals. Planetary Guardians is one portal in his game, and he's got eight other game designers. Like, just imagine Planetary Guardians is just one ninth of whatever he's got, and I'm saying his game is better than anything I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. So he's writing this out. He doesn't even have a laptop, and this Gino guy introduces me to as a business mentor. 
So I start writing. I go, do you know what he's got? Do you know what he's doing? And you're his business mentor and you don't know that he needs a laptop? Send him a freaking laptop. So I send this huge thing to him. And guess what he comes back with? Oh, yeah. I, I, don't, uh, I don't respond to money urgent money requests. And I, you know, comprehend this, right? He says he has a network of financers. He has a network of entrepreneurs. The guy who introduced me to him doesn't have a laptop and he's deciding the best game on the freaking planet. And I'm going, why don't you buy him a fucking laptop? And he's going, I don't do that. <laughs> you know, my say, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> like, are, you know, what do originators have to do to get the people around them to fucking understand they need some fucking help? You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah man i feel like i have i i know what laptop i think would be really good for you check out the microsoft surface the new one that just came out uh -huh. it's a touch screen it's good for business it's good for gaming and it's good for freaking zooming it's good for everything can you send me three i don't have the funds to send you three right now unfortunately can you They're phone one of your friends and say send these guys three freaking laptops and I will reimburse them 10 times when I get my freaking whatever. Like just uh, like somebody, like they will become my best friend the rest of my fucking life. All I want now, <laughs> like now, not when the business plan's written, not when I jump through the hoops. I want it now. And if they help me, they have my freaking friendship for the rest of my fucking life. Okay, tell them that until on you, my agreement. Tell you delete them on Facebook a week later. <laughs> well, that's if they you don't like friends. <laughs> but you understand the frustration of what I'm carrying and the lack of support I have. Do you understand that? Like why I've been mad and frustrated? There's reason I'm an asshole if you call me that. I'm carrying something for the species, and I'm not getting a freaking laptop. Throw me a bone. All these millionaires and whoever the fuck they're doing. Fuck them. Fuck them. There's a lot to say to that, which I won't get into right now. Um. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, like, the, the artist who's carrying something. But you're more than an artist, Elijah. That's the thing. Like, if, you, if you're just an artist, that'd be one thing. Like, And that's what we'll, you know, I don't know. I feel like I could say the same thing, but I have to, I've had to fucking do things so that I can bring in capital so that I can fund the rest of my things. I know what I want to do here. I know what I want to do here it has nothing to do with money. And I'd rather fucking spend my time doing what you do, but I also sell fucking water machines. Okay. Because you know, and I take a chunk of my time to do it and bust my ass because I have to, to fund the people around me. So, you know, like, um, and I don't fucking whine to people and tell them why they can't support me. And I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but I feel like it's important to also take sovereignty. Like I see you and you could do one webinar a week and make fucking three to five K and fucking not have to worry about it. But you don't and you don't purposefully sometimes. And I also fucking pisses me off and frustrates me because you have more to offer to local businesses and people who could use your tools and your guidance in a structured way. And I see all these fucking idiots making five K a webinar and five K a book call. Are you listening to me? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm part of all these webinar courses where people with one tenth of your knowledge and experiences are making a hundred times more. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, why the fuck is he making these dumb fucking videos on fucking <laughs> and wasting his fucking time making these hour long things when he could be crushing it and making more revenue than all of us? Fuck, it pisses me off. And that's part of what I was going to write to you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're right. No, do you know what it is? I mean, you know, I have a, a bit of an eccentric sense of humor, right? So I know, but I'm like, damn it, of all the people I know, like, fuck. So yeah, whatever. We'll hey, get around did you see? Did point. you see? I, I I'm I have made the step of looking normal in front of other people. Right? Yeah, that's pretty good. So big step. That's a big. That's a big step, right? I did. And I get it. There's a big story and a big resistance to the nature of the system. And there's a purest nature of being a systems thinker and an artist. And there's a satirical nature of your being. That's just a fucking, like, you're like, like you know, you have satire on your very secret plan. And there's like a fetish with that world. And I, I get you, man. I've been around you a lot. 
But the other part of me is like, fuck, just suit up and fucking make 5K a session, man. Just fucking do it. <laughs> you know, like get your shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm out of the cave. I'm just yeah. emerging. I'm just coming out. So you're yeah. right. You're right. And I'm, I'm happy to support that too, man. Like if that's something like, you know, I've yeah. Make, how myself. about this? Make me a nice splash page. Make, yeah. make me, make me the like. Help me create. Help me. Fuck. Okay. I'll do it. I'll help you. Yeah. I will. I'm actually learning. I'm taking courses right now. Actually, I have something to send you right now. Um, just take a look at this because if you like this model, this is something we can create for you. Um, let me get this to you right now. <laughs> no, but do, do you know what? Do you know what I think we should do? This is what like. I mean, I'm doing these one-hour shows with different people, but of all people, we need to do it right. We need to do. A one hour show a week where we where we do something i don't know what it is but and also man me and you together man like fuck what we could pull off for any business anywhere anything around the world just yeah. in an hour of marrying your time to looking yeah. at something it's like insane incalculable value man i know <laughs> website <laughs> marketing i'm helping <laughs> zamir right do you know what i'm helping zamir i'm making i figured out i'm making about 20 30 an hour with him yeah and he's my only he's one of my only clients and he's got you know bless his heart you know he's uh he's, he's, his stuff is great you know whatever you dance he's touch you turn to gold man mm -hmm. it was great seeing Shaq. christ that guy is beaming you know yeah I mean, he is just a beaming Castro. Hey, what do you think about that idea about the uh, the video for Ayana for you and him? Oh God! <laughs> can, can we do that? Like, I don't know. No? Maybe. I don't Maybe. know. How, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> you dress as Osho. You you come. It's door to door sales. I mean, just fuck that, that enough. And you come to the door and Castro, you're, he comes to the door dressed in army. And just, he goes in character as like a, a very positive Castro. And you're Osho and you're selling water machines. I, I, you wouldn't even have to script it. I know you would kill it. And, and, in, one, and in one 10 minute video, I bet you'll sell a thousand machines. Let me film it. Let me direct it. Just let me do. If let, you direct it and film it, I'll do it. I yeah. just don't have the to direct and film it. No, let me. Yeah. Yeah, you go ahead and do that. You'll get. You'll, if, if you do sell machines, I'll give you a commission on every one of them. Of course you will, you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm just doing it for my <laughs> positivity? <laughs> All right, I gotta jump. I gotta go to Boz's memorial. It's on. Um, it's on Zoom right now. Oh, is it? Okay. Just so weird, but I gotta go. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, tomorrow at twelve. Tomorrow at twelve. Okay, I'll uh, I'll work on. Uh, I'm facilitating it, right? Go for it, man. So who's is Lucien coming in, or just us four? No, Lucien's coming in. Okay, so it's five. Okay, well, who's? Give me a. How how is Lucien fitting in with us four? Like what's? Um. So Lucien, ma'am. I mean, Lucy and Savannah Foundation, he's worked with over a thousand organizations doing multi-stakeholder collaboration. His father and his lineage is like fucking rich in his work. He's at Davos all the time, World Economic Forum. He's just, at, he's a, he's, he is the nexus. He's like at a nexus point of nexus point. Wow. He runs a house in San Francisco called the Savannah House, which is like the oldest house in San Francisco that had a hundred year pedigree of systems change artists coming through. He's, you know, held hundred person dinners at his house every day for like three months, bringing every major organization and systemization together to have conversations about the movement. He's created up game, which is like the game designed to create systemic change on the planet. He's just doing it, you know, and he's just running off fucking love. So, you know, how he fits in and where? I don't know. Maybe he's at the fucking center of the wheel. I don't know. That <laughs> guy's doing some shit. Okay. 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 Well, so, so it seems like a core team of five. Then is that? Looks like it right now. Is it because there needs to be a core team and then everybody else? It looks like right now that's that's what's happening. Five makes sense. That makes sense for product.
Okay. Yep. See you tomorrow. So I'll, I'll load this into the plant. Yep. <laughs> this one? Oh shit. <laughs> People at some, I, I'm not, I'm not promoting it. Eh? I mean, it's just like people don't, there's so many gems in here now. Like, so many, man. Just load it up, man. Just do it. Just do it. I'm not going to say shit. Okay. Especially our rant at each other. <laughs> you can give me the business. I don't, I, you can tell me whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've earned that with each other now. Yeah. Speak your truth, man. I can take your truth. <laughs> You've earned, you've, earned, you've earned the right, <laughs> and you, you, and I must say, you. How can I say this? Well, I told you. I think I gave you the best compliment I've given anyone in my life. I said that you do more than everyone else in the planet combined, <laughs> <laughs> which isn't saying much for them, right? It's not giving kudos to you and saying, "God damn it," you know. People still don't get it. They will get it. They're going to get it. <laughs> kind of a What's reverse it? backhand compliment. <laughs> He's burning in the hellfires. <laughs> hey, did you, you didn't, you didn't uh, tell me what Crystal said. What did she say? Um, you said remember. she contacted you. That was. Yeah, she was doing, um, she, I know Crystal, she was telling me what she, what, she, what she really wanted. I'm hearing you, Crystal, you know, you're gonna watch this. Uh, is she really wanted an email account unlocked for Veeam. Oh. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lost a password, I'm like, that's nice. Uh, this is so it's all the, and by the way, can you open that? <laughs> yeah. Very reminiscent, like I knew it was for a reason. I knew it was a friendly reminiscing call to, <laughs> It's all good I, I look forward to the day we're all laughing together and, and doing our work together because yeah. like nobody's out. No, there's not. She's a she's a core part. She always is. It's just everybody's in it. We're all one. It's just a constellation grid of our evolution. That's it. Yeah. You know, I look forward to it too. <laughs> Nobody ribs us both like she does. Oh man. <laughs> Me and you ever take ourselves too seriously? We got crystal clear. <laughs> well, hi Crystal. Hope you're uh, doing well. <laughs> And we'll see you soon. You're, she, she'll probably be the only person who watches this one. And then I know, right? <laughs> the only one who will watch to the end. And then she'll go, I knew they were going to mention me. I knew it. Totally. See you, brother.